Hey guys, this is Laurentios with Bucket Dev, and I'm going to be doing my second video of a tutorial series on my plugin, Lawrence RPG Moms. Uh, this whole video is going to be just over the monsters.yml file, as there is a lot of different settings you can change in it, and I'm going to be going over each. So for the duration of this video, I'm going to be using the skeleton as the zombie is bugged, as I explained in the past video, um, but the skeleton will work. <laughs> so first off you see that there's an armor setting. And this armor setting can change whether the creature has armor equipped um, or not. So if you don't want them to ever have armor equipped essentially you can just set it to some really high level they're never going to reach and they'll always just have normal equipment. Or in skeleton's case it's just going to have a bow and no armor. Um, however, you can set it to where every creature has diamond armor or skeletons and zombies. Every creature doesn't have access to armor, just the skeletons and zombies. Um, so if I change these values on the skeleton, I'm standing in a level 12 area. So if I reload the server, spawn a skeleton, it has diamond armor. I'll go ahead and set this back so you can see that that actually works. and spawn a skeleton. Perfectly fine. So that's basically how that works. Um, the armor sets do override the previous armor sets. So for example, chainmail overrides leather, gold overrides chainmail and leather, iron overrides gold, chainmail, and leather, diamond overrides all the rest, of course. So that's basically how it works. It's basically, I said basically a lot, I'm sorry. It's going to look and search for the best gear it can possibly have and equip that and keep it. So even if you have chainmail set to 100 and you have a level 100 creature, um, it's still going to use gold instead of chainmail just because gold's better. So that's all it is for the armor. Now let's go ahead and look at health, experience, and damage. I'm using a beta 2.1 version, so there's also these two settings. I will explain them for the upcoming update, but for now you don't have these settings. Um, so going back to health, this essentially just changes how much health the creature has. So a normal skeleton that is level 12 has 24 health, and that is calculated with this formula. Um, what it does is it takes the level of the creature and puts that in for the tag level. So you can see right here it's 20 plus 3 plus 1. So that's simply how it works. You can make this a flat number like 2000 and if I reload the server and I spawn a skeleton down it has 2000 health. So you can basically do whatever you want with this. I personally think using a scaling formula like this is smarter and is the whole reason for leveling mobs but if you rather just have a flat rate, you can. Um, the experience formula works the same way. Oh, rainy weather. Um, the experience formula works the same way um, as I explained in the config.yml. The heroes and Minecraft experience enchantment gets the amount of experience from this formula. So I have heroes on here, so you can see how it works. But if I kill a level 12 creature, since it's the same formula as the health, I should get 24 experience. So let me butcher these guys and spawn a skeleton. And now if I kill him, I got 24 experience. So just showing you that I'm not bluffing on this, this actually works. Um, you wouldn't want to do this because this is absolutely ridiculous. But I'll go ahead and reload. And if I kill this guy, I should get 2,000 for experience. Yep. So just like that, that's how simply you can change that. And set this back. And finally, we have the damage formula. Um, all this does is the min and max value makes it a range of numbers that you can possibly have to randomize it and essentially make it an RPG type, type uh, system. So... With this right here, uh, if you're ever going to use the random system, you need to use this specifically. 
Um, what this does is it produces a random number between your max and min values, and it, you have to use the syntax or it won't really work. If you just take out the min, you're essentially getting a random number between 0 and 4, just the way it works. Um, it's because the, fam the formula is sent through a Java reader, and it basically reads it and determines a result with math. So, go ahead and set this back to make sure it works. Um, I'm not going to really show you guys that it works because there's not really a good way to show you that it's working specifically, but I can assure you that it does work. Um, I've tested it a lot myself on my RPG server elsewhere, but it, it, you can take my word that it works. But you can change this to whatever you want. If you wanted to be really ridiculous and just kill your players with a chance, you can do this. Um, but as always, you can use level. Now, a difference between this formula and these formulas. With this formula, you can use an event tag. Now, that all this does is it grabs the Minecraft event and gets the damage that you do with it. So if a arrow hits you, it'll just take the arrow damage and put that in the formula. All right, and finally, the last two settings aren't too difficult. Uh, basically what it does is it just enables or disables a mob to have to be put into the plugin. So for example if you don't want bats to have any levels or take up any memory you can just set it to false and my plugin will just completely ignore bats. And you can do that on a per creature type basis. So if I wanted chickens to not have it but I want cows to have it I can set that. Now if we do have it on true for example we can specifically disable on different worlds. So if you have a creative world, for example, and it's set to enable, chickens will be enabled on all other worlds except for creative. Whereas if you set it to false, it's disabled on all worlds. But if you want it to be enabled on all worlds, you just clear the setting, and so there's no disabled worlds, and it's enabled everywhere. Well, I hope this video has helped you guys. Um, if you have any questions, as always, you can post on the plugin page or send me a private message. I really appreciate you guys getting in contact with me and trying to use my plugin. It means a lot to me, and it lets me realize that my plugin's getting used, and I appreciate that. So keep contacting me, and I'll talk to you.